Hey guys, so I recently did a poll and I know not a lot of people have actually responded to it, 27 people, but that's sufficient. Um, and I wanted to ask you what you wanted to see a video of next. And a lot of you wanted to see a video on design system components, create, creating a mobile design from scratch in Figma. And I've already created a bunch of videos on the design system components, so you can ha already have a look at them, but I may be doing other videos as well about other type of components, design sy system components. So that's hopefully going to be coming as well. Uh, creating a mobile design from scratch, that's something that I have been thinking about and I'll probably do it, but since Webflow is something that I haven't touched on my channel, it's something unrelated. So obviously I wanted to share that knowledge as well from my end. There are definitely tons of much better uh, Webflow developers than me on YouTube, but I obviously wanted to give my impressions and my usage and my workflow for Webflow. So here we go. When you actually sign up with Webflow, you are gonna land into a workspace, something like this. I have a freelancer workspace, that's the plan that I'm on. Obviously you can have whatever plan you are on particularly, but what we're going to do is we're basically gonna start a new site. In this particular video, we're just going to be going over creating uh, or just exploring the Webflow terrain, the canvas, understanding the different types of tools that we have in Webflow, and basically just playing around roughly. We are going to be creating an actual site and maybe multiple sites in the course of this whole course. So definitely stay tuned. So when you create a new site, you obviously have the ability to create a new site by using a blank template, or you have a bunch of starter templates as well that you can use to get started. And then you obviously have a bunch of templates if you keep on scrolling down. So all of them are available. But I'm just gonna start from scratch because the purpose of this site isn't necessarily to uh, create a website, it's actually to show you what, what, what Webflow has to offer to us and the way that we can understand Webflow's canvas and tooling system. So I'm gonna say I said YouTube tutorial one and let's just create the site. So once you create a site, you land into what we call is a design mode or a state where you can basically just start designing things. So if you see, this is generally the, the canvas on the middle, you basically have your page, you have the body element as you can see, you have the navigator in the, on the left hand side. So the left hand side are layers, similar to the layers you have in Figma, Sketch, XT, whatever, these are all the layers that you have and these are also going to be the layers or the DOM uh, which you're gonna have in when you actually code a website or when you actually publish it. So this is really important. Apart from that, like here on the right, you actually see the, the properties or the things that you can do on the element that you've selected on the left. So any element you select on the left, you're gonna see the properties on the right. I can see the styling properties. So the first option is style and it's, it would be really helpful if you can remember these shortcuts as well because they help you speed up your workflow really fast. I'm just gonna zoom in as well so you can see all of this really big. So S is the option for style, D is the option for uh, element settings, and these are the two probably that I want you to remember the most. Uh, these, the style manager isn't really something that you actually come back to quite often, so I don't necessarily recommend that, remembering that, and then you have interactions, but S and D. You basically have to remember them and they're not really hard to remember S and D because they're just side by side. That's something that you can have in your mind. Then on the top, you basically see the very, the responsive screens that you have. Now you have multiple screens here. You have one, that, that's the desk, desktop screen. Then you have another, that's the tablet. Another, you have the mobile view and then you have the mobile portrait view. And if you actually wanna see what something looks like and you, you can basically just press one, two, three, four. So one is gonna be your base. So if I, let's say, go ahead and actually add another larger breakpoint here. So create breakpoint, you cannot remove this breakpoint from the project once it's created. I'm gonna create it. Now, as you can see, this is the larger breakpoint, one, two, eight, zero pixel and up. This is the base one and so on and so forth. I'm gonna press command Z. Now, as you can see, if I pressed command Z, I have removed the breakpoint. So obviously you can press command Z, command shift Z as well to, to redo or undo your last, or redo it basically. So I'm gonna press command Z again. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. And then obviously you have five to see the canvas settings if you wanna do something, but never mind the five, just remember one, two, three, four, just basic keystrokes to change the responsive view. 
At the top, you also have the options that I just talked about, Command Z and then Command Shift Z to redo. You also see an indicator whether your changes are saved. You can also see the exporting, if you wanna, let's say, export the code. Now, one thing you can do really well with Webflow is you can create your site, even if people actually just want a front front-end HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, whatever site, and they just want that particular format, you can basically create that site on Webflow and then export it if you want. Similarly, you can obviously publish it, you can share it as well. If you wanna share it to other content editors or you wanna actually uh, share a read-only link as well, that's all something you can do and you can publish it and link a custom domain. We're going to be covering these things afterwards as well. Now, this, probably the most important panel for creating things is actually on the left. So adding elements, if you wanna add something, you basically press A. So I don't necessarily want you to remember all of these shortcuts at once. As you keep on using Webflow, as you keep on creating sites, you're gonna use them and you're gonna remember them. So A is for adding elements, Shift A is for components. So again, Shift A, even if you don't remember, it's no big deal, but A for adding is pretty good. Z is for the navigation, uh, the, the navigator, which shows you all the layers of your, of your website. Now, this is really important. This is something that you're actually going to be coming to back and forth. So A and Z are probably things that you'll be coming. So A, obviously you wanna add something. I wanna add a container. It's in the navigator. I wanna add something as well. I can press A and I can basically drag it again. So that's something that you have to remember P is for pages. So if you press P, you're gonna land on pages. If you wanna work on multiple pages, you can. In order to create a page, you can uh, use the plus button here at the top. If you wanna create a folder, you can do that as well. To organize things. Then you have the CMS, and we're actually going to be talking about the CMS in a lot more detail because obviously it's, a, it's an advanced topic, but it's really, really easy to use a CMS in Webflow. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that users, don't even mind the users. You have the e-commerce, don't even mind that as well. Images obviously are important because obviously you wanna drag your assets here as well. So probably remember this shortcut if you have to keep on coming back to it. And one thing to remember is if you press the shortcut on the view that you're on again, it's gonna take you to the previous view that you were on. So for example, if I press A and I press A again, so obviously I have the element and layout toggling, but if I press J and then press J again, it's gonna take me to the navigator. So the navigator is the main view that you actually have to remember. And then you have basic settings as well, but I don't want you to worry about that. Relume is also something that I want to talk about in a later video, but let's just, I guess, make ourselves comfortable on this particular page. I'm pretty sure you guys understand how this works right now. So let's just go ahead and actually create a really simple structure of a page. So in, in a page, what do you normally have? Well, you have a header, right? So in a header, you can you can add a header as a section. So imagine this is your section. On the right, you have the selector. So on the selector, you can define what this thing is. You can define whether it's a header or not, and so on and so forth. You can define a class for it as well. So I can say header. So this is gonna be our header class. I can again make this, sorry, I actually changed the body tag. I can come here and I can say this is a header. If I want, I can make this a component as well. If I wanna reuse it in multiple pages, that's something that can be done. But generally, again, you have all of these elements that you can use. Now, in a header, you usually have an image. So I can just search for an image, where is an image? And a lot of people may actually start searching, okay, where can I find an image? And it's gonna take them some time, obviously, because they don't remember where an image is. Another great way of adding things, which I personally think is great, is using the command K key. Now, a lot of people who are using Mattermost, Slack, or Discord and stuff along those lines. Command K is an actual uh, channel switcher. You press Command K on any of these tools, it's gonna open a channel switcher and you can navigate to elements easily. Similarly here, if you press Command K, I can use the Command K shortcut to find anything. I wanna include an image, I'm just gonna search for image, press enter. As you can see, the image is here in the header. And I'm gonna expand that. I wanna, let's say, add a, add maybe a div to the right, I can say command K, then div. So as you can see, we have a div here. Now in the div, I wanna have some links. So I can say, I wanna add a link block. And then I can have all of these, like these, maybe I, I didn't want to add a link block. I just wanted to add a text link. So I'm gonna add a text link and then I'm just gonna copy paste it. So here are the links. And if I wanna place them side by side, I'm gonna go to the header and then I can choose the display that I want. So a block is gonna basically align things at the top at the bottom, but if I wanna align them left and right, 
flex and grid elements are a great way of doing this. So I can just click on flex and I can say the flex box. Now I'm not going to be explaining what a flex box is. I've already done HTML, CSS videos on exp and explaining these concepts. So you can definitely check those out as well. But I just wanna give the maximum amount of spacing in between. So one thing is on the right and the other thing is on the left. So I can do that by just doing this. And if I wanted to align it, I can basically align it in the middle doing this. Similarly, if I wanted to give it a padding, I can press Alt. If I press Alt, I, as you can see, I'm giving the padding on the on the right and the left simultaneously. If I wanted to just give one-sided padding, I can obviously just drag it and have it one-sided or I can type it as well and it's gonna add that padding. But if you basically press Alt, it's gonna do both. If you press Shift and Alt, it's gonna do all four sides. So that's really important. Similarly, if I wanted to give a particular padding, I can just, let's say, say 24, 24, and then here we have the padding. And then I can give it a color as well. So all of these are CSS properties that you usually normally interact with. So imagine this is your header. Maybe now that the header is done, I wanna add another section. Now, what would you do to add another section? Not go here. Ideally, now you should go and press Command K and then add another section. So imagine this is your intro section. So I'm gonna name it intro minus section. I can have a column layout here as well. Maybe in this intro section, I wanna have a column on the left, a column on the right. I can do that with Flexbox as well, but just to explore other ways of doing things, I'm gonna say I wanna add columns in there. Now, as you can see, I have a column on the left, I have it on the right. I can also define or customize how this column, what the size of this column is gonna be. Do I need two columns? Do I need three columns? What the particular sizing of this column is gonna be? But maybe that's fine. I'm gonna add a heading by pressing Command K. So this is column one, another heading on the column. And this is gonna be our heading again. So this is how you can have things side by side as well. And we can definitely explore all the things that exist in this panel, in these element panel, but we're going to be covering all of that hopefully soon in the videos as well. So now if I, let's say, wanted to create a footer, I can basically just copy this header, I can paste it at the bottom, I can delete this class, I can change it to footer, and similarly in this footer, I can have elements side by side, I can give spacing in between them, I can do whatever I want. And this is how you can basically structure a simple page in Webflow. Now imagine if I wanted to obviously have this footer sticking at the bottom, I can basically, something that I can do is, and there are different ways of doing it. I can obviously have the footer fixed at the bottom, or I can always say that this intro section is gonna take a particular height. Maybe it's gonna take, let's say, 80 VH, which is vertical height, but that produces a scroll. So another good way of doing this is to actually convert your body tag. Maybe I'm getting a bit too complicated. I'm not sure if I should be but let's say even if we are, I'm gonna give it a height of 100%. And just to show you, if I actually give it this uh, a background, now as you can see, this whole thing is actually 100%. This is my, uh, what do we call it, body tag. Now if I wanted to have what's in the middle take the maximum amount of spacing, like the intro section, I can basically say that this flex element is gonna grow if possible. So it's gonna grow to the maximum if possible. Now I can have the have that fixed at the bottom. I can keep on duplicating this heading. And if I do so, as you can see, if there's gonna be a lot more content, the, uh, this particular thing, this footer is gonna go off scale. If there's not a lot of content, then obviously the footer is always gonna stick at the bottom. So again, just some ways to think about it. Now, one other thing that I wanted to do here as well, just so you can start experimenting with it in the future as well, is the responsive layout. Now imagine on mobile, or let's say even on tablet, this is the tablet view. I don't want this intro section to actually have be side by side. I want it up and down. What do I do? I'm basically gonna select the columns. I'm gonna go here into the column settings, which as I mentioned, you should remember the screenshot, S for styles, D for whatever settings, but S is for style and you should know that the right element or the settings panel is basically the shortcut key that's right beside S, which is D. So now if I wanna say what this thing should be like, I can define it. I can say on table, on tablet view, that it should be, let's say up and down. On iPhone, it should also be up and down or whatever. And now as you can see, this is our first column. So first, and these are all our second columns. So I've done that. And now as you can see, first, second, third, fourth, whatever. So that's again something I think we all should, you guys should know. 
Similarly, since in the header, I haven't really included the columns, so I can't really control the responsive layout with the columns. But what I can do is maybe on mobile, maybe on mobile, I actually want the links to be at the bottom and the image to be at the center and the links should also be at the center, but they should be up and down. I can basically just go to the header. I can say the header should be vertical and already that's done. That's this thing that I wanted to do is done. And now I can add a padding to the top. I can add a padding to the bottom and maybe I can give us gap in between the image and the text. And surprisingly, if I go to the larger variants, as you can see, nothing's changed there. So the good thing about this or Webflow is the resolution that has the star, which is the breakpoint, is gonna define the styles that are going to be inherited by all of the other screens. So if I try to go to this screen, the second, uh, the tablet one, as you can see, nothing has changed because it's inheriting its style from the base one. But if I go to the third one, where I actually manually changed something, it's overwriting the styles that it's receiving from the top. And it's, as you can see, there are changes here. And the changes are identified by the blue highlight. So it's saying, okay, there's something that has changed here. It was previously something else, but now it's changed, similar to the gap, similar to, Similarly here in the padding, we can see something's different. If I want to revert it to its original position that's in the base responsive layout, I can basically press Alt and I can click on it and that's gonna revert it. Similarly, I can click on it here, that's reverted. Alt and click, Alt and click. All of this is reverted. Now, if I wanted to revert something else, I go to the 24 and press Alt, nothing happens because it's saying there's nothing to revert because that's the style that's defined at the top level. So if something is, uh, Orange, that basically means that that style has been uh, intentionally applied. If something is, let's say, uh, white, that basically means it's inheriting the default, that's the default value that's available in CSS for that particular thing. So as you can see, gap is white and it's zero because zero is the default version. Minimum width is auto, that's the default thing in CSS. So these are all things that you need to remember and I'm just gonna press Command Z to revert these things and yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. Definitely let me know if this video was useful to you, if there's something specific that you want. And in the next video, we'll hopefully be covering some of some more advanced topics like maybe components and overrides. And then maybe in the future, we're going to be covering CMS as well. And then ideally we'll be creating a site. So this was a quick video I wanted to show you just how you can start navigating uh, the domain of Webflow, I guess, in generally. So that's pretty much it. Do subscribe and do hit the bell icon. I'll see you later. Take care.